I'd like for, for briefly to look at how you evaluate an execution architecture and what you would evaluate an, arch an execution architecture for. We start by considering what could you evaluate in an execution architecture. I mean, it's, it's distinct from the conceptual architecture for a good reason. The functionality was evaluated in the conceptual architecture. Now, presumably, the conceptual architecture did provide all of the functionality that was required to answer the business problem. Now, what we want to do or know about the execution architecture is have we broken that in, in transforming this into a computer system? Have we broken that functionality or have we severely compromised it? Not necessarily broken it, but compromised it in some way. So we would necessarily have to review for that. Um, the, the next thing we'd, we'd want to evaluate uh, would be have we got the best trade-off among the non-functional characteristics that we can. The execution architecture is, is where you implement those, where these are determined or how, how their provision is determined. So clearly if this is where it happens then we probably ought to have a look at has it happened and has it happened well. To, to do an evaluation, there are other various uh, specific techniques, but it seems to come back to a scenario-based evaluation. No matter what you do, you're going to be dealing with a collection of scenarios. And, and uh, I get, I'll repeat that we need a good collection of scenarios. Not an exhaustive collection, but a really good collection. Where we want scenarios that illustrate normal functioning. Um, probably normal critical function. I mean, functions that are critical to the system that if these weren't there, it wouldn't deliver the business value. We need the scenario that illustrates that this is working uh, as expected, just the normal case, the happy case. We also need scenarios that exercise the exception cases. These are the expected exceptions uh, within, within the business context. We're not stressing the computer system itself, but the extremes of what could reasonably be expected. For example, an extremely long name or a, a combination of circumstances that could happen in uh, a, real, um, a, a real transaction. Um, we, we want to know. We, we certainly want to know that we have not introduced some ludicrousness such as um, a person being declared dead when they're not. Um, and if that did happen, could we recover from that? This, this kind of exception uh, that we want to deal with. Then we want to have a look at um, the uh, trade-offs between the non-functional characteristics. So these require really good uh, scenarios that indicate how the system does behave in those circumstances. And uh, the, the one I keep coming up with is that, all right, we, we're trading availability against um, modifiability. So, or we, we've brought the system down to do some maintenance and there's uh, some, something comes in that we have to pay attention to. Which is favoured? Now, in, in most circumstances, uh, if the system's down to do maintenance, you perform your maintenance and uh, you, you attend to what you need to attend to later. And that usually is covered by simply scheduling the maintenance for a, a low demand period. But this is not always possible. Uh, increasingly, systems are starting to go to essentially continuous deployment, so um, that that question would go away. But the point is that you want scenarios that try to illustrate the trade-offs between the different uh, non-functional characteristics: security versus usability, um, testability versus, say, security, um, availability versus performance, performance versus um, modifiability, and so on. Have we got a, a scenario that, that illustrates these? Now for the evaluation methods, um, the usual um, sit around a room, uh, functional walkthrough with uh, CIC cards or with just simply with scenarios is um, a pretty good, um, pretty good evaluation method. If you want to get more formal, there's the ATAN, the Architecture Trade-Off Analysis Method. Um, you can use that. Now that is a bit more formal in setting up the meeting itself, but it uh, tries to examine uh, 
the implementation of specific parts of the architecture where there's been some decision about we'll use this method or we'll use, we'll use this architecture feature as opposed to that architecture feature for these reasons. And we have a look at, well, what are the consequences of these decisions? Uh, so that's the, the ATAM method. If you want to get really rigorous and really uh, extreme, then, then the HASOP or some variation of the HASOP analysis uh, works pretty well. And that is where you go through every piece of the architecture, examining it for uh, its behavior under um, extreme conditions. Um, so that was how, there's uh, evaluating the um, execution architecture. Largely, you should be checking for those things that you have introduced about the, the execution architecture. That is, that you haven't um, compromised the functionality that you had um, in, in the conceptual architecture. You've implemented it without breaking things. And that you have achieved the best trade-off among the non-functional characteristics that, that you think you can.